Welcome to Tech Talk with Hughes Performance. My name is Pete Nichols. I'll be your host today. If this is your first time tuning in, please be sure to do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Also, check us out on social media. We're on Facebook, uploading daily content. We also have a website, HughesPerformance.com. has our latest catalog available for viewing and download over 1,300 new part numbers for 2019, so be sure to check that out. Chances are, if you're interested in automatic transmission, torque converter, or accessories, we're going to have what you need or we'll be able to custom build it for you. So today in our ongoing series discussing torque converter technology, we're going to take a few minutes and cover lockup torque converters from the OEM perspective. There are also drag racing specific lockup torque converters. We'll get into those in another episode because they're a little bit different beast than the OEM technology. So jumping right in, what we have here are some examples for you to see. This is a half of a converter, an OEM 12 inch GM converter. It's a single disc lockup. You have the piston with the damper assembly and your friction lining. And you have the cover inside here that this friction lining applies against this smooth machine surface right here in the cover. The original intent of the OEMs with the lockup torque converter was to provide increased fuel efficiency. Uh, if you tuned in last week on our 101 episode, we talked a little bit about converter slippage and converter efficiency and the losses associated with having a hydraulic fluid coupling between the engine and transmission. Well, a lockup technology bridges that gap and applies the clutch to the inside of the cover, internally locking up the converter while at cruising speeds. So it basically acts like a clutch with a manual transmission. You end up with a true one-to-one -one drive ratio between the engine and the transmission. You eliminate all converter slippage. You get 100% efficiency out of the converter. You get a little bit better gas mileage and you get less heat buildup in the converter and transmission. As the years went on, uh, lockup transmissions and converters pretty much became standard equipment in all major OEMs. You first really saw it in around 78 with Chrysler. Uh, Ford followed suit in about 82. Uh, GM about 1980. And uh, imports are kind of all over the board when they incorporated lockup technology. Um, of course, people wanted to modify their vehicles, even though we're dealing with uh, more stringent emission standards fuel saving devices, uh, that type of thing, and horsepower is more available today than it's ever been, which has required the aftermarket to respond with stronger lockup torque converters featuring better friction materials on the lining, uh, billet pistons or forged pistons, and when necessary, a forged steel or a billet steel cover to replace this factory steel stamping. Uh, on some stampings, not all, they are prone to flex when the lockup applies and the cover can actually crack over time or you can experience premature failure of the lockup lining from cover flex uh, because it won't have 100% surface area engagement. Uh, it can allow the clutch to slip excessively and that's going to cause burning and glazing of the friction material. That's where your billet and your forged steel covers come into play. It eliminates all the flex. It's a much heavier duty piece. It's machined out of a solid chunk of billet steel. Uh, eliminates all potential for flex. Uh, just a, basically a bulletproof piece. This lockup converter here is for the GM 8-speed 8L90. Uh, we actually do a wide variety of lockup converters. Uh, we can do stuff for the Ford 6R80, uh, GM 6L80s and 6L90s, uh, 722.6 Chrysler, Mercedes Tranny, uh, we do them for imports, the earlier stuff, your 700 R4s, your C5s, your 904 and 727 lockups, all your diesel applications, uh, 48 RE's, 4100's, Allison's. We pretty much have a modified OEM and or heavy duty billet premium lockup converter option for just about any combination out there. If we don't offer it, call us, shoot us an email, chances are we'll make it for you. So jumping into the aftermarket lockup torque converter, we have an impeller, just like we talked about last week. We have a stator, 
again, just like we talked about last week. And we have the turbine. It's all basically the same stuff as what we talked about last week in terms of overall construction and operating theory. This particular converter is a multi-disc lockup converter. You'll hear these marketed as triple disc or multi-disc. That's a frequent marketing buzzword is triple disc or even five disc converter. This unit, you see it has a billet steel one piece piston. It's not gonna flex on you. Very, very durable. And then you actually have three friction surfaces making this a triple disc, three disc torque converter. The advantage of having multiple friction surfaces, you get a lot more surface area being applied when the transmission commands the converter to lock up. Because you have more surface area, you eliminate potential slippage between the frictions, the steels, and the cover. Uh, also, if you happen to have a max effort it's a street strip application, and you want to lock the converter at wide open throttle. Uh, say you're out at the drag strip and you want to eliminate all converter slippage and see just how much mile an hour you can get out of your car. Uh, I would consider a multi disc lockup torque converter absolutely mandatory. A single disc converter, whether OEM configuration or aftermarket, with just one of these friction linings, which are readily available, it's just not going to hold up in that type of application. You're you're having to couple a tremendous load at wide open throttle with something that makes a lot of horsepower. Same goes for diesels. Uh, if you're towing, especially heavier loads, and you go to lock the converter, you're going to want a multi-disc converter. Single disc converter just isn't going to hold up. That's where you run into a lot of cover flex. That's where you run into premature friction lining failures. The way a lockup works in OEM technology, it relies on turbine pressure to apply the clutch. So you actually have an electronic solenoid in your transmission, typically either located in the valve body or the front pump assembly. And the onboard computer or switch, if you're controlling it manually, uh, will activate or deactivate that solenoid. Uh, in normal operation, when the converter's not being commanded to lock, you have fluid flowing through that solenoid and being fed through the input shaft to the inside of the front cover on the converter and out to this piston. And that fluid builds pressure and it holds the piston off of the cover and keeps it from applying. When you apply an electric signal to that solenoid, whether it be through a PCM or a manual switch, you're closing the solenoid. You're closing off fluid flow through the solenoid to the input shaft to the cover to hold the clutch off the natural hydraulic forces generated in the converter between the impeller and the turbine physically force this clutch to apply against the inside cover. You can see it's splined. You have a matching spline on the turbine. That's how it's coupled inside the converter assembly. So a lot of guys think that you're actually using fluid pressure to apply the clutch. Uh, it's actually just the reverse of that in OEM. Uh, and that's where you get into the drag racing stuff. The technology is reverse yet again. We actually are using hydraulic pressure to apply the clutch pack in a drag racing lockup converter, say in a ProMod application, uh, radial versus the world car, X275, Ultra Street, a lot of those classes, you'll see custom uh, high horsepower lockup converters being used. And we're going to be touching on that in a future episode. So thanks for tuning in today. Uh, again, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button, check us out on social media, Facebook, our website, useperformance.com. If you have any questions, give us a call at 1-800-274-RACE, R-A-C-E, or shoot us an email. Uh, we can't wait to help you out. Have a great day.